Hi, in this video we'll be talking about the shape of a NumPy array. We'll be using Jupyter Notebook again. First, let's import NumPy as NP. Now, the shape of an array is a tuple of the numbers of elements in each dimension. Have a look at the following array. A equals NP array. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Fine. Now let's print it out. Here's our NumPy array. As you can see, this is a two-dimensional array. Now, this array has four rows and three columns. So the shape is four by three. We can use the shape method to check the shape of the array. NP shape of A 4 by 3. Now let's have a look at some arrays with different numbers of dimensions. Here we have a three dimensional array. Let's print it out. Fine. So we pass a list containing nested lists to the array method. There are three lists at the first level, each of them containing two sublists, and each sublist containing one element. Hence the shape is 3, 2, 1. 3 by 2 by 1. Let's check it out. NP shape B. 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. Okay. Now, here's a one dimensional array. Let's use the shape function again. Shape of C. The shape is returned as a one tuple, so we need a comma at the end. We always need a comma at the end in one element tuple. Finally, a zero-dimensional array, which actually is a scatter. D equals NP array 7. NP shape of D. The shape of this array is just an empty tuple. Instead of using the shape method, we can use the shape attribute on the array object. So, we can do it like so. D shape. And the result is the same. If we have a look at the shape of an array, we can tell in which order it's indexed. So, in our first example, the shape was 4 by 3. So first the rows are indexed, then the columns. This order represents the depth of nesting. 4, this is the first level of nesting. 3, this is the second level. The last level always represents the number of elements in the last level of nesting. In this example, there's just one level of nesting. But if the shape is 3, 2, 1, like here, then we have two levels of nesting, represented by the numbers 3 and 2. And 1 represents the number of elements in the last level of nesting. 
Provided we maintain the total size of an array, we can easily change its shape. Let's have a look at our first example again. Over here. Here the shape is 4 by 3 and there are 12 elements all together. This shape could be changed to 3 by 4 or 6 by 2 or 2 by 6. Let's see how it works. First, let's print our A array again so that we can see it better. Fine. And now let's change the shape to 3 rows and 4 columns. So A shape equals 3 by 4. And now let's print our array again. So it's changed. Now we have 3 rows and 4 columns. And now let's change the shape to 6 rows and 2 columns. So A shape equals six rows two columns print a and now we have six rows and two columns and now let's change the shape to two rows and six columns a shape equals two rows, six columns, print A, yeah, two rows, six columns. If we try to change the shape so that the total number of elements would differ, we get a value error. So let's try to change the shape of this array to four by five. A shape equals four rows, five columns. Now we would get 20 elements, but there are only 12. So let's try to print it out. This is what we get. Cannot reshape array of size 12 into shape 4 or 5. We can even change the number of dimensions provided the total number of elements is maintained. Here's our C array which is a vector, a one-dimensional array. And let's print it again so that you can see it better over here. Fine. And now let's reshape it to a two-dimensional array. So, C shape equals five rows one column print c and this is what we get now the number of dimensions is changed to two now we have two dimensions and the shape is five rows by one column or Or let's change the shape to 1 by 5. So C shape equals 1 by 5. Print C. And now we get something like this. 1 row, 5 columns. Now in the next example we see how the number of dimensions can be reduced. Here's our original B array. Now let's print it out. So here we have three dimensions. Let's print the shape. Three by two by one. Now let's reduce the array to two dimensions. All we have to keep in mind is that there must be six elements all together. So this should be possible. B shape equals six rows, one column. 
print b. Yeah, now we have just two dimensions, six rows, one column, and even to one dimension, b shape equals six comma. This is a tuple with one dimension, six. And let's print it out. And now we have just one dimension. Another method we can use to reshape an array is the reshape method. Here's how we can use it. First, let's define a numpy array like this. Let's print it out. Print A. So this is our A numpy array. And now let's create another array using the reshape method. B equals A reshape three by four. Print B. Now this array is reshaped to have three rows and four columns. And now let's do something like this. C equals NP arrange 20, which generates 20 numbers, reshape 4 by 5. And these numbers will be arranged in four rows and five columns. Print C. And here it is. Four rows, five columns, 20 numbers all together from 0 to 19. Or have a look at this. D equals NP arrange. 36 reshape 2 by 3 by 6 print D. Now here we have 36 elements, so from 0 to 35, and the shape is 2 by 3 by 6. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.